This is an It Came From Gen X video. All right, so in 1966, very popular toy we had growing up here, received a patent, the Spirograph. Mm -hmm. You remember this thing here, it was, it had, a, a, I think it had different sets, but it had like a plastic thing, you might remember, and it had different shapes yes. and different things. So you would put a colored pen or pencil or something in the thing and move it around and it would automatically draw perfectly, you know, symmetry, yes. perfect symmetry shapes on a piece of paper. You can do different things and make different designs. You can make all kinds of incredible designs with this thing i used to i used to have one and play with it for hours i had tons of spirograph drawings as a mm -hmm. child growing up here we'll hold the thought on spirograph until we get to you know another the other one here because it might make your list of some favorite toys um in 1958 on january the 28th lego patented its famous iconic brick design so the Lego group, which means play well, which I did not know, it had it began as a wooden toy company in 1932. Hmm. Uh, the Denmark company pivoted in 1947 to plastic toys, creating their first versions of their signature automatic binding bricks. Um, obviously, they planted it, and then it just never looked back. Obviously, Lego to this day is just a phenomenon in itself with all the intricate uh sets that are out there they've had movies video games there's a a, a game show for the you know, lego masters out there mm -hmm. right now so there's a lego mm -hmm. museum which i want to check out i've never been i'm gonna go check that out so so thinking of the spiral graph and legos you know definitely toys that i had growing up as a child as did most kids probably from our generation this made me think about some of our favorite toys in general uh growing up so if you want to mention the spirograph or lego 2 that's certainly okay if it does not make your immediate list but i'm interested in your favorite some of your favorite types of toys as a kid now this could be a particular toy i don't care or it could be something like lego in general which okay. obviously had different play sets and stuff like that so some of your most favorite things uh, growing up so keith any any come to mind oh gosh yeah so many um this toy it's funny when you think about the things kids have now but we didn't have this stuff they have now so this was the closest thing to being taken away somewhere you mm -hmm. know you if you got any kind of computer now you can visit any country on the planet you can go to outer space on that computer if you will but back in the day to just see other things there was nothing cooler to me than a uh um Viewmaster. Viewmaster. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Man, I could just stare in there for days, and if you hold up yep. to the light, whatever picture you were looking at was lit up, and it was just fascinating to me. That I was just cool. loved it. I would just look at the same stuff for forever. Um, also, I think one of the most important toys for all of us, and it's really weird, but it kind of changed everything because it allowed you to do things indoors that you did outdoors. Nerf, just Nerf yeah. everything. And Nerf well, used to be just simple ball. Then it just blew up to Nerf everything. And now yeah. you can get Nerf machine guns. And I mean, you go to war with Nerf now. Very good. Um, so that was one of my good ones. And um, I also uh, really, really, really loved uh, Hot Wheels. And my mm -hmm. thing with the Hot Wheels was to, and I got this from a friend, it got me in trouble, but he would go in his sister's room and steal her fingernail polish, and fingernail polish remover. And he taught me how to take the paint off of them and repaint them with fingernail polish. And that was really great when I learned that. <laughs> so we were designing our own Hot Wheels. And I just want to list a last one. Um, I had a great imagination as a child, but I think I got more fun out of a light bright than anybody. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah, big yeah. Metal, metal wash tubs, guys. Mm -hmm. So I would get a big metal wash tub, and then I would get me a couldn't wait for a box to come to the house because I take the box, give me a big piece of cardboard, and I would spend hours on this box in a black marker drawing in controls and buttons, lasers, thrust, and all this other stuff. 
and <laughs> all these controls and, and screen readouts that I drew on here, I punched holes in them, right? And then I took that light bright and I took that black screen off and threw that away. And I put the light bright down in the wash tub. And then I laid my control panel on top of it and turned the lights out. And I'd be in my bedroom for hours until like I'm controlling my old spaceship. It just, it was great times. Interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Great Actually, story. I did that yesterday, but whatever. Oh, that's all right. Hey. <laughs> that's great. Kind of forgot yeah. about the light bright. Love that. Mm-hmm. I definitely had one. Uh, yeah, Peyton had one as a kid too. Matter of fact. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Skinner. So I went toys. on a different route. I, I did toy brands, but that's okay because you can do the toys with it. I had Nerf as my number one. Oh, um, yeah. As a kid, I was I was into sports more than I was. Next to Star Wars, I was into sports. So when Nerf came out, man, I could, I don't have to go outside to throw a ball. I can do this indoors yeah. like you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two on my list is Kenner, which mm-hmm. you all know and we've talked about is that's who put Star Wars on the map and, and the kids. Yep. And I absolutely adored every figure, everything I had with Star Wars um, growing up. And then I've also got on here Mattel. Uh, mm-hmm. again with sports, Mattel, not only do they have all the board games, but the Tekken football. Yeah, the, I could Fisher that Scott sure. right behind them. Yep. Um, you know. Well, I didn't go too right there. Yes, indeed. I didn't go anywhere without that thing with the extra set of batteries because mm-hmm. if I had lost the batteries, I would have been I was pissed. Right. If that thing ran out. And then the uh, last one is Milton Bradley. They had some of the Who coolest games Bradley? growing up, which yeah. si- which Fisher has behind him a, a picture. Simon says. Yep. Uh, and yep. the board game Perfection was one of my favorites as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this go go on for hours on the stuff we have, but those those are the ones that hit home with me. Lost Art, the board game, you know, um, just just great fun, great way to connect with friends. Which I spoke to Coach Cooper the other night. We're going to have another board game night coming up here. Just yeah, don't I love that. I miss, I miss that. Well, I'll say, just don't bring out Attic Antics. Yeah, don't bring that out. But we got something bigger planned. We'll talk to you guys about. All right. Oh, Lord, you put Coach Cooper in there and any bigger plans, I'm I'm afraid. Yeah, I'll talk to you after the show. <laughs> All right. Okay, so some of my favorites uh, as a kid, now as a young child, uh, Fisher Price, the – the all the t- play sets and the, the the at the time it was the wooden figures uh i had like the I mean, they had so many play sets back mm-hmm. then man i had i had like the farm i had the I the that. park yeah. the parking garage with a little yeah. plastic car you crank up the elevator mm-hmm. and would roll yeah, down the that. ramp i had the village so it had like a town that would open up and you had a traffic That's light you had the jail and the barber shop man like the boats the airplane the airport they had so many play sets out there i had just a ton of those bless my parents heart i used to play with those things for hours and hours and hours and hours it was a safe toy and really just my imagination would just run right now of course, yeah, I was the only child, so it was me at home a lot, just learning to entertain uh, myself. So, it was, you know, these toys probably took to a whole other level for me, just the, you know, what I was able to do, and I didn't have to share with anybody. So, there you have it. Uh, toys for me took went to another level. My dad got me a Tyco electric train set when I was a young kid as well, and then for for a while for Christmases, I would get like little add on things. So like I would have, so for a while there, I had a whole train set set up in the basement of my parents' house. My dad hand built a table for me. God bless him. Uh, we had the tracks all set up and stuff. So I would have like a, you know, you pull up the, you pull up to a thing and you run the train en- engine backwards and a guy would like a, you know, would load the train and stuff yeah. and then all these little cool things I was building up. I had a lot of fun with that for many, many years. Um, Kenner, also Skinner, you know, the whole Star Wars stuff. That was a whole other world, you know, all the action figures and the ships. I mean, geez, when that, when those came out, that was, again, I, that 
replaced the probably the amount of time with Fisher Price with Star Wars action figures and those toys, just playing with all the play sets and everything and the figures was just phenomenal. And then I don't care if it's considered a toy or not, whatever. But the 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 pinnacle in my youth was the Atari Twenty Six Hundred when that thing came mm-hmm. out. My parents got that for me. That was the most exciting Christmas gift. One of the most exciting Christmas gifts I ever I'm got in my you, entire buddy. life. Man, just playing those games and all that is just hours and so hours. So many kids hours. in my house, but I'm always like, get these kids out of my house. Yeah, absolutely. We pile on each other's house and play. Yeah. Honorable mentions, I'll just say Legos was up there and Hot Wheels for me too, Keith. I had, of course, you know, the, the tracks and the sets and everything else here. And I'll add while he's here, one of the greatest individual toys of all time. Oh, yes. So, uh, this was an original. I'm going to show it on camera here. This was the the Evil Knievel Ideal Brand Jump Cycle. This is a figure from one of the original toys back in the 70s here. Now, they've remade these now. You can buy a new one right now online. That's They've great. reissued them. That toy was one of the greatest toys yes, it ever. Was. It never failed to it work properly. Coolest. You were cool. Yes. You had that. Now, <laughs> Fish, you guys mentioned the Star Wars ships. I never had mm-hmm. a Star Wars ship. I didn't see Star Wars till a while after it came out, years after it came out. Um, I never had a Star Wars ship, but speaking of some of my favorite toys, now I did have a huge Darth Vader. And mm-hmm. I love that. I love I had him fight my big incredible hulk that I had. But you know what ship I have that was just the greatest toy ever mentioned? You guys remember a show called Space 1999? Oh, yeah. Channel the, big white ship. the Eagle mm-hmm. ship. Yeah, and you could take the front of it off and make the small eagle. I had that whole big ship and the size open mm-hmm. up. Man, I love that thing. Uh, good I memories. love to see one of those again, yeah. And gosh, you want to go back to our real, real childhood when we were little? Who didn't have a C and say? <laughs> yeah. That's that right. Fun. One Good of my stuff. Favorite I scenes of uh, King of Queens is when Doug was laid off and, and Deacon was laid off, and the old man was there, and Deacon had his little baby, and he kept pulling the C and C to entertain him, and it you know, oh. had the animals on it. Froggy goes quack, and they were just getting annoyed with it, and they just start betting on him. I got five dollars on the froggy. <laughs> 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 just gambling. I said, I could see me and my stupid friends doing that, man. <laughs> Turn That's the and stay to Vegas. Yep. I had one of those too. Great stuff. All right. A lot of good memories here, guys. Uh, you know, if, if you're listening, watching still, and if you have any toys that some of your favorites that we mentioned or didn't mention, we'd love to hear from you. So you can email us at the cave of Gen X uh, 330 at gmail.com or post on our Facebook page or Twitter or Instagram. Uh, or just re- you know reach out to us and uh, like we'd love to uh, hear from you and while we're at it, if there's any particular topic you want to hear or have us reminisce about, let us know. Love to hear from you. So hey, this is Skinner from it came from Gen X. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and like, and we'll see you next time.